Well, good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody had a good week off. Um, relax a little bit. Got a chance to watch some volleyball for my daughter, which was a lot of fun. And now we're back at the grind and uh, have seven weeks in a row of it. So um, kind of what we worked on last week is going to kind of what's going to feed us through the next seven weeks. And uh, knock on wood, we are able to, to stay healthy because we know we've got uh, a pretty good grind here for the next seven weeks. So I thought last week was a productive week with a lot of things that we did, uh, focusing more on us, you know, K-State versus K-State and uh, very minimal on, on TCU, our next opponent. And we're working into that uh, start started yesterday and so uh, guys were had a good uh, uh, bounce in their step yesterday good practice yesterday but we know we have to have a terrific week of preparation uh, to play a really good TCU team Saturday. Chris you come off two losses in the bye week and still have lots to play for as you said over the last over the next seven seven weeks here um, a sense of urgency what was the message to the team yesterday? Uh, just to get back to the fundamentals, get back to the grind, get back to work on what we can control, and that's you know your preparation for today. You know you, you just can't you can be where your feet are, and you got to control what you can control today. And that's the the message that uh, we're going to continue to send. I, I know that this is a um, you know we, we, everybody wants to uh, be a race to maturity and a race to the top. We know it's a process, and and uh, um, our guys know it's a process. I, I I know this. We are getting better. Better on both sides of the ball. I, I saw it over the last uh, week or so of practice how things are just a little bit more crisp. Now, will that translate to Saturday? I, I, I don't know, guys, but our guys are gaining more confidence. You, you face some good defenses, but none is better in, at stopping the run than, than TCU. What, what makes them so good? I, a, they're very physical. I think that's the first thing you look at when you flip on the film is, is how physical Coach Patterson's defense play uh, plays. And then, uh, you know, they, they, they hit their fits. They know their assignment. They know where their help's at. They know if they're a lever player or a spill player. They do all the, the fundamental things right. I know you mentioned going K-State versus K-State. Are there uh, a couple of young players or a young player or two that stood out in terms of taking advantage of some of those reps? Uh, you know, I don't know if there's specific young player. Uh, you know, all of our skill kids continue to improve. Those are the ones that have a, a better chance to uh, to see the field. Uh, Keenan Garber continues to get better. I don't know if Keenan, you know, we still want to redshirt him, but he's a possibility to get some playing time. Chris Heron continues to improve. Um, that's where we need to find some guys. Skill position, Joe, Joe Urban continues to improve. Um, you know, so I, I'm excited about the progress that uh, all of our young players are making. Uh, and, uh, you know, the ability for those guys to go against some of the older guys um, in a highly competitive situation I know is going to benefit them. Malik's status still the same as yesterday? He, yeah, he didn't practice yesterday, um, and I don't foresee him practicing today. Um, they said there's a, there's an opportunity as we continue on mid to late week that he could do some things, but, you know, I, I knew that a couple weeks ago, and, you know, uh, so I, I, it's up in the air right now. Coach, you mentioned having better leverage on your tackle yep. uh, situations. How do you feel that progressed? Is it well, uh, it. Uh... It, we hope hope it improved. We emphasized it. We did a lot of tackling things. Um, it, it still has to be proof in the pudding on Saturday. That's the bottom line for us, and, and we know it. Is we have to be uh, much better tacklers. We, we've got to grab cloth and and and, and wait for the cavalry to re arrive when it's a, a bigger body and stuff. But uh, uh, it's something that uh, you know we are emphasizing on a daily basis. I know you said you saw a big game coming from Phillip Brooks, but just what have you seen overall this season that makes you think he could be a, a top receiver? Well, I don't want, and I told Philip this when I met with him in in the spring. Um, I didn't want him to be known or just have the thing of, "Hey, you're a jet sweep guy and a return specialist." Because I, I have very high expectations for Philip, um, and it's a confidence thing with Philip as far as knowing our offense, running good routes, um, coming up with big catches, coming up with catches in traffic, and I, I see that uh, you know gaining that confidence that he did you know a week ago against Baylor, catching the ball in traffic and making some plays, uh, I'm sure hopeful and, and plan on him, you know, taking that and fueling him and, and having a really good rest of the season. And what stands out to you most about TCU on offense? 
Um, the backs are, are, are tremendous football players. For starters, they want to run the football. I mean, they're they're no different than than a lot of schools have thought of, you know, run the football to set up the play action pass. Uh, I, I think they're really good up front, uh, and they have uh, you know some really good skill kids on the outside playing uh, a freshman quarterback. They, they they they'll mix in another guy, uh, Delton, now and then as well. So I mean, they're well rounded, um, but without question, we have to be able to uh, to control as much as we can their run game. Coach Patterson made it sound like Delton would get some, some snaps out there. Yeah. I feel like what you saw against Spencer Sanders at Oklahoma State gives you any prep for that or are they different? Uh, it's, I don't know Delton probably as well as you guys do. So that's, you know, on the limited snaps that, that we have seen him play this year um, and, and just listening to talking to the GAs and guys around uh, and stuff, uh, that he's a really good football player. He, he makes things happen. He's a, a spark for him. And, and obviously, I think he throws the ball uh, better than probably people give him credit for, but he's, he's so dangerous running the football, and, and, and we know that. But I I fully expect to see both of them. We've seen both of them in, in multiple games this year. I don't know how much more um, that we'll see him than than they will than we will the freshman. But uh, uh, without question, we have to be ready for his package. What has seen a freshman court like? What have you been impressed with? I think he's got really good poise. I, I really do. You know, he he was under a lot of duress against Iowa State and stuff, and he um, you delivered the ball well. He made the correct reads on some of the RPOs. Uh, you know, it's tough as a true freshman to play that position and, and uh, uh, I'm familiar with him anyway through the recruiting process and, and uh, I think he's a terrific football player and, and their future's really bright and, uh, and, and for him it's great because his future's now. How much uh, closer, if at all, is a guy like Logan Wilson to helping out in the secondary if he gets on the field? Um, he's close, you know, and he's a guy that we have to make some decisions on, you know, with the four-game rule because he's right at it right now. Um, you know, there's some things that uh, Logan does really well and uh, we're excited about, but, um, you know, there's some things from an experience standpoint that we're still uh, hopeful that he continues to, to grow and gain. Uh, and, you know, knock on wood, we've stayed relatively healthy at that spot with Kiwi Walt and, and uh, AJ that we haven't either had the ability or he hasn't been been able to play as much and he's done some really good things on special teams so uh, Logan's somebody that this week we're we're having a bigger evaluation on to see if we're going to continue on with him or or, are we going to potentially um, try to redshirt him when you when you look at cut ups of the TCU defense what what makes them so tough on third down I think they're third in the country and uh, forcing three and outs. Yeah, no easy throws. I think that's the biggest thing I'd say when it's third down for those guys is they're not, you know, they don't void zones and give you easy throws. They're contesting every throw. They're physical on wide receivers, tight ends, backs. You know, they do a really good job in the pass rush game. They always have done an exceptional job rushing the passer. But you know, to convert and move the chains against these guys, you're going to have to make contested throws and contested catches. I would stay, I was noticing Iowa State was about the only team to have success running the ball against TCU going back to the running game. They had 189 rushing yards against them in the last game. What was Iowa State able to do that made them more effective running the ball? You know, I, I think they confused him probably a little bit with some formations and some motions and some formation in the boundary. The quarterback run hurt him a little bit. Um, you know, they had a week uh, of a bye week, so I'm sure they shored a lot of their things up just like we're trying to do do as well. And some of it's matchups, you know, some of it. Um, maybe they maybe Iowa State found a matchup that they really liked. I, I don't know that, but uh, uh, Iowa State's a really good offensive football team too. What well, another one? You, you faced Trevor Hubbard, and now you're going against Darius Anderson. Anderson, their number two ranked running back in the Big 12. What makes Anderson special? Because he can hit a home run. No, no question. I mean, he's, uh, you know, the beach outside, beach inside, beat you with speed, break tackles. Um, you know, and that's where we have to do a, uh, a really good job of, of same thing we talked about, playing with great leverage and, and making open field tackles. On the TCU defense, just how similar or different are they from what you saw with Baylor and Oklahoma State the first two weeks? 
probably a little different schematically, um, but still very aggressive. Um, you know, they're, they're going to uh, not sit back. They're going to be more of an attacking style of defense, um, but they do run more four down. They do run three down, but they, they've conventionally run more four down. Now they, they may be switched to a little three down. We, we've been preparing for both, but uh, they're an attacking style defense. And that's uh, obviously when you have that, that you cause a lot of negative plays and disruption. The things that we have to avoid that we've stubbed ourselves in the foot a little bit is, 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 is having those negative plays. We have to avoid those. What, what was the bye week like for the offensive line and what kind of progress? You know, it was the same as as it's been. I mean, we're we're continuing to uh, to progress and, and learn our scheme, continuing to work some different blocking schemes, whether it's three down, four down pressures, those things. Working some of the uh, guys that haven't played as much. You know, we we went hard with the Duffs and and Adlers and and Revis and Noah. Those guys played. You know, kind of scrimmaged a little bit against uh, some of the uh, other defensive guys that maybe didn't play quite as much. Not just freshmen, but all the guys scrimmaged unless you've played played significant amount in, in games just to, um, to evaluate, continue to evaluate because, uh, you know, I, I'm really concerned about the seven-week stretch we're going into, and we have to have more depth and more guys that we can count on. Uh, on that, that first play out of the delay against Oklahoma State, Sam Wheeler had, had a big catch, and then when I talked to Blaze Gammon last week, he just mentioned how blown away he had been by Wheeler's progress because he'd only been in position seven months. So yeah. How have you felt about how he's come along and you know, the, the fighting pullback? Yeah, uh, he's made great leaps from August 1 uh, to where we're at now. I think everybody saw some glimpses in the spring that we were really excited about uh, and probably even – as coaches, we maybe had some unrealistic expectations for a kid that made it three or four practices in. Uh, that how far along would he would he be? Um, I think the the two open weeks have helped Sammy quite a bit. Uh, learn our offense more. Um, you know, learn how to block at the point of attack. Uh, all the things. You know, we don't just have conventional tight ends. They're on the ball. They're off the ball. They're flex. They're in the backfield. They're motion and they're shift and all those things that you kind of take for granted that somebody like Blaze just knows because he's played the position. And, and I've been really impressed with Sammy. Um, you know, once again, a, a young player that's going to have an exceptional career at that position here. After the, the game a couple weeks ago, yeah. you can sense that this team was really disappointed with the way the, the, the football that's been put on tape for the past couple of weeks. So now with it being game week again, how fired up have you noticed this team for this upcoming opponent? Well, obviously they're they're excited because it is game week. And we talked about that, and and um, you know you, there's you're going to have disappointments in life. Boy, you got to be able to move forward. You, you know you're going to have adversity in life. You know you, you can't dwell on that. Well, you you've got to attack the adversity and keep moving forward and and grow from it. If you're not learning and growing from the adversity, uh, then it's going to destroy you. And uh, uh, I, I'm convinced that our guys are learning. They are growing. Once again, will that mean we're going to have a, a way different outcome on Saturday? I, I don't know. I just know we're getting better on both sides of the ball, and the guys uh, are believing in each other and have never stopped that. The two bye weeks and four-week span is a bit unusual. I know that, but you're through with it. You think not a fan of it. it not, not, and I don't know how this will play out in years to come or, or what it's been in the past, all those things. It's uh, football's a rhythm sport and, and, you, and you, need to, you need to be able to play to continue to improve. Um, and you know you can only practice so much uh, just from NCAA guidelines and rules and stuff and, and, and you get better by competition, bottom line. I, I'm glad we had two bye weeks. I would have loved one in week four and week 10 or week four in week nine or something. Uh, but to have them as close as they are back to back, um, some guys like a Sammy could be a benefit for it. Other guys, you know, like Wayne and J-Mac, guys that, that are playing well but new to a position, those guys just need to continue to play games.